All right, welcome back to part three. I'm gonna show you one more type of compounding formula, and then we're gonna do some other examples. So there's actually something called continuous compounding, where you are continuously calculating your interest and, and your amount. So if it were possible to, if you, if you compound daily, it's 365 times a year. Well, if you were to compound, let's say, hourly, 365 times 24. If you were to compound every minute, so multiply the number of hours by 60, all right, and you'll see this keeps, keeps going up here. So there is an idea of continuous compounding. And so the formula, when we know the number of times, is P times one plus R over N raised to the N T power. Continuous compounding is this formula, the amount, the principal. Now, this is R times T for the exponent. That's R times T. This is the new thing here, E. Now, that's actually not a variable. E is a number. You're probably familiar with the idea of pi, and pi is approximately 3.1415 and so on. Well, there are other numbers out there that are similar to the idea of pi. That just, they tend, they show up in a lot of different places. E has a lot of applications. It comes into play in a lot of real world problems. So on your calculator, there is an E button right here. Okay, it says E raised to the X power. Now if I hit that, then there is E, and I'm gonna say, let's say one, e raised to the first power, and I get a decimal, 2.71828. So e is approximately 2.718. Now there's a way, you know, how, how did people come up with e? We know that pi is related to circles. Where the heck is e coming from? Well, there's a way to get it. We're not gonna talk about it in this set of notes. Um, but E comes up in a lot of natural settings. E is a base, okay? So just like uh, if you're doubling something, two raised to some power, E comes up in a lot of situations where we talk about what's called growth or decay. So in nature, for example, if you look at uh, the decay of radioactive elements, or if you look at carbon dating of fossils, we use this base, E, to explain the formula for what's happening here. The growth, um, now it could, be, it could be money, it could be um, other things, but growth is also going to use this base. So as an example, Let's say that we will come back to our $1,000 and our rate is 4%, the time is a year, but now we're continuously compounding. So the amount is 1,000 times E. Now remember, E is not a variable, E is, in, is a number here. E raised to the R times T. So on the calculator, you would type 1,000, okay, and then your E button right here. So E raised to the, that would just be 0 0.04. Enter, and we have 1,040.81. Now if we go back very briefly, when we were compounding daily, uh, sorry, coming back to the example with $1,000 investment, when we did quarterly, we got to $1,040.60, but if we are continuously compounding, it's $1,040.81. Now, that's, this leads us to the idea the rate is 4%. However, when I get to the end of the year, the interest that I've earned here is not $40, it's $40.81. It's a little bit extra money. 
So what we have is something called the effective rate of interest. That is the simple interest for an annual rate. So instead of compounding, if we had done simple interest and ended up with this amount, then that means if we divide by the original principle, 4.081, or sorry, that would be point, that would be point zero four zero eight one. And as a percent, 4.081 percent. That is the effective rate of interest. So I've actually earned a little bit more than 4 percent when it comes down to the end of it. That's why compounding is nice. Yeah, my interest rate is 4 percent, but my effective rate of interest when I get to the end of the year is higher than that. All right, now there's a formula here for the present value of money. But actually, we are going to ignore this because we can just solve these algebraically. So we're going to do a couple examples. Number two, uh, this comes off a page from an old book. Find the amount that results from $50 invested, that's the P, at 6%, that's the rate, compounded monthly, so N is 12, after a period of three years. There's the time. Now this is compounded monthly, so we're gonna use our formula, P times one plus R over N raised to the NT, and now we just substitute numbers. So 50 is our principal, the rate is 0 0.06, N is the number of years, that's three, Oh, sorry, n is the number of times compounded. Oops, 12. Yeah, I need to be careful. Raised to the n times t power, that would be 12 times 3. And this is why I write it out, because then I'm, I, I pick up on that. Okay, I made a mistake. Type that into the calculator, and you're going to get $59.83. So all we're doing is substituting into the formula and we are evaluating. So let's say we want to work backwards though. So here's a, a different example from this book. Find the principal. So now we don't know what the P is needed. Find the principal needed now to get $75 after three years at 8% compounded quarterly. So quarterly is four times a year. This time, they give us A. They give us the ending amount. They ask us for, for what did we need to start with so that we would end up with 75. So when I substitute numbers now, 75 is my A. 75 equals P times parentheses, 1 plus 8% is 0.08. We compound that four times a year, raised to the n times t, it's t years. And we're going to solve this equation for p. Now I know that looks complicated, but we have to remember here, this whole thing is just a number. 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4 raised to the 12th power is just a value. All right, and so... Now there's a couple ways, I just wanna show you. If I type this part right here, so parentheses one plus 0 0.08 divided by four, and then all of that raised to the 12th power. So 1.26824, now I know that the numbers actually go on. My calculator is cutting this off for some reason. I need to change the rounding on it. So. If I write into the equation though, 75 equals this number, let's say 1.26824 times P. Well, how do we solve an equation here? How do we undo multiplication? We need to divide by that. So all we're gonna do is divide both sides by that number and then we'll get our answer. Now one thing that I'm going to do though, is I'm gonna take the principal 75. I want to divide, see this is already rounded. 
I don't like to take a rounded answer and then use that in my next step. And the reason is, is when I do that, I'm gonna create more error. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll, I'll write this as a fraction here, so 75 over, I'm going to type one plus 0 0.08 divided by four raised to the 12th power. Okay, so I'm not gonna do the rounding yet. I'm gonna type the whole thing in, enter, and we get 59.137. Now this is money, so let's round it to the hundreds place. That means this will become 0.14. So the principal is $59.14. So if we started with that, after three years, compounded quarterly at 8%, we would have 75. All right, let's take one more problem here. Number 30. How long does it take an investment to double in value if it is invested at 10% per annuum compounded monthly? All right, so how long does it take? So T is the missing piece. How long does it take an investment to double in value if it is invested at 10% per annuum? That just means per year. So our rate is 10% compounded monthly. How, mo how long would it take if we compound continuously? So the thing about this, when you look at this, you notice that we don't have as many numbers as we normally do. So let's say we're compounding monthly. So the amount, which we don't know, and we also don't know the principal. We don't know what we're starting with. One plus, uh, we do know the rate is 10%, 0.10 or 0 0.1 divided by 12. And then that would be 12 times T. We don't know T. Now you look at this and you say, well, how can we solve this when we have one, two, three variables? We have three things that are missing here. Well, the key is, they're asking us to double our money. Now, I don't know what P is, but if I double that, if I multiply that by two, the amount becomes 2P. So I can write the amount on the left side as two times P. Whatever this is, I'm just gonna multiply it by two. Now, you're still saying, well, we still have two variables. We have P and we have T. However, I am going to divide both sides by P. And what happens here is we get just two equals, this is just one times one plus 0.10 divided by 12 raised to the 12 T. And so now we have an equation that has just one variable in it. Now the variable is in the exponent. We have not yet learned how we can solve this algebraically when the variable is in the exponent. However, we have learned how to solve an equation with the graphing calculator. So what I'm gonna do here is take the calculator and I want to go to graph. Because what I'm gonna do is this. We are going to graph the left side and the right side. So menu, graph, function. Now f1 of x is going to be the left side of my equation. So here's my f1, my first function. It's just two. And when I graph that, that that's y equals two. That should be a horizontal line. And there it is, there's my horizontal line. Now, the right side of the equation is going to be our second function. So let me graph the right side. I'm gonna add another function. And when I type that, so that's parentheses, one plus is 0.1 divided by 12. And the exponent is raised to the 12, and I'm gonna use x for that. Now this is an exponential function. 
So we should be getting some kind of curve here when I hit enter, and I do. Now one thing to notice here, we've got the left side of the equation and the right side. Notice that they intersect right around here. When you solve an equation by graphing, you are finding the intersection point. We're finding the value of t, in this case, that makes the left side equal to the right side. Graphically, that would be where they cross, where they have the same xy value in common. Now I can find the intersection of this if I go menu. I'm going to analyze my graph here, number six. I'm looking for the intersection. All right, now, so the calculator pops up this dotted line here and it says, okay, lower bound. So what I need to do is I want a value to the left of this point, and then I'm gonna do an upper bound to the right. So I can actually just hit enter here, that's okay. There's my left bound, and then I'm gonna use the trackpad to drag this. Okay, it's kinda of going slow here. Till I get to the right of that and hit enter. Notice the word intersection comes up. Now it's a little bit difficult to see here, but that says 6.96, and then the y value here, uh, that's two. Okay, that actually makes sense. So 6.96 comma two is the intersection. So intersect 6.96 comma two. Now remember though, what we're finding is the x value of that coordinate. We need the t. So the answer is 6.96 years. That's how long it takes for your money to double. Now let's do one more thing here. It says, how about if we compounded continuously? So what if we wanted to double, but we compounded instead of monthly, we compound continuously? So it would be 2p equals pe raised to the rt, where the rate is 0.1. I would divide by p. So 2 equals e to the 0.1 times t. So what I would do here is I would change my second equation, my second function. All right, so if I get rid of that one, and then I'll add another equation, graph, function, all right, and that was e raised to the point one x, enter, uh, it looks pretty similar. Now sometimes uh, you might not see this, we may need to see more to the right or, or up. So in this case, I could go, if I wanna see more, I can go to window, and my window settings there, number one, Let's say I want to see farther to the right. So let me change 10 years instead of 10 years. Let's go 20 years and see what happens. I'll do okay. All right, so you can definitely see the intersection and notice how, hey, there's the curve. We're starting to see that exponential curve here, that growth. So I'm gonna go menu. I want the intersection, so I analyze number four. Uh, now I need my bound to be to the left, lower bound to the left of the intersection. Okay, that looks good. Upper bound. All right, there it is, intersection. It even shows me the word. Now that says 6.9, and again, it's a little tricky to see here, 6.93. So the time is 6.93 years. So if we are compounding continuously, it's actually gonna be a little bit faster for our money to double. All right, now just think about if your money doubled every seven years, I mean, let's say you did this for 35 years. You know, think about how much money you would have at that point. If you started with, say, $10,000, in seven years, now it's 20,000. And then in 14 years, it's 40. So seven years, 14, 21, do it again. Now it's 160,000, 28 years. Do it again, 320. 640. And now you're a millionaire.
Now that's only, that's assuming that you invest $10,000, but you only do it one time. So if you're investing throughout your life, you're gonna be putting money in. So it's not just gonna be this one time thing. Now we're also assuming seven or 10%. 10% is really high. It's probably not gonna be like that, but if we can get 10% growth, there you go. And that's the end of the notes.